Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. In today's video I'm going to be testing out some products from Resin Pro. I'll be testing resin and pigments and I have to say I got a little bit carried away. So today's video is a kind of casting marathon and a demolding marathon. So if you like to watch demolding, brace yourself because there's going to be a lot. Right, so Resin Pro sent me all these beautiful products to test out and review and I'm very happy about it because I've been wanting to try out some different resins for a while. So it's been quite interesting trying these out and seeing if they can win me over with them. The resin I'm going to be using today is called Liquidissima. Liquidissima, I find it hard to say. <laughs> Liquidissima. And it's ideal for castings of up to three centimeters and they actually recommend that you do your casting of at least one centimeter with this resin but because I like to push the boundaries I'm going to test it with some really really thin things as well just to see what happens. So today I'm going to be reviewing the price, the clarity, are there any micro bubbles, the detail, the strength and rigidity, the smell, the working time, the resistance to humidity and the colour. Okay, so let's get started. So liquidissima needs to be weighed and the ratio is 1 to 0 0.6. So you need to measure out part A, that's the 1, and the Part B is the 0 0.6. So basically that means part B needs to be 60% the weight of part A. So I measured 190 grams of part A. And then what I need to do is divide that by 100 to get 1%. And then just multiply that by 60 to get 60%. And then that gives me 114 grams, which is the weight I need for part B. Now you need to mix it slowly and carefully for up to five minutes to make sure it is completely mixed. Now I've been having a little bit of a problem with resins in the past with humidity and it getting a kind of patina on the surface of my cured resin. And one tip I've read through Resin Pro's information is that once you've mixed it, let it stand and let the exothermic reaction start before you start pouring. So let it heat up a bit before you start pouring it. And I did speed this right up just so that you didn't have to sit and watch me stir for five minutes. Right then, after letting it sit for five minutes, I was ready to start pouring. And I have a confession to make. If my husband's watching this video, he'll now knows what I've done. I've pinched his mould from the kitchen. <laughs> He's a patisserie chef, so he has quite a lot of moulds and I'm sometimes tempted to pinch them. I'll have to um, replace this mould for him. <laughs> um, but what I'm doing is I'm just filling all these domes up because what I'm going to do is I'm going to test out every single colour and glitter that they sent me and I'm going to use the little domes on my storage racks that I've made so that I can see clearly what each colour looks like. And I wanted to pour that first just so that I knew how much resin I had left. And then I've just used up all the rest of the resin in loads and loads of moulds because I read that Resin Pro really pride itself with this particular resin on it picking up lots of fine detail. So I had a look through all my moulds and I found loads and I couldn't choose. And I so I ended up using most of them. I used to be really into cake making and cake decorating. And I went through a phase of just buying loads and loads of little moulds for decorating my cakes. Um, so I had loads. So I did get carried away and after this little bit I'm going to fast forward through 
all the um, pouring because I did so much and you would really would get bored if I'd left it in real time. <laughs> So I'm mixing in some of the white pigment and some of the really fine glitter that they sent me. And I really do like the fine glitter. It's great. It's quite iridescent. And one thing that I did find very early on was that the powder, the pigment powders take longer to mix in than the previous powders that I've used. So that is one thing that I've discovered so far, um, which isn't a problem. Um, just need to mix for longer to get it all dispersed. When I'm pouring into moulds like this, what I like to do once the resin's in is give it a good stretch and a squeeze and it kind of makes sure it's completely um, coated on the inside with the resin and it gets rid of any air bubbles and it, the resin gets into all the little cracks. Now this resin is brilliant for um, getting into the cracks and the reason is it's got a really low viscosity that means it's really thin and that also means it's got a long working time which is great because I spent around an hour filling in all these um, <laughs> moulds and it was still fine at the end of that hour um, I could still work it was starting to get thicker after an hour but it was I could have probably done another 15 minutes so it's got a long working time and that thinness really gets into the mould nicely now for this resin it's recommended to use a minimum depth of one centimetre but I, I do like to push the limits on things and just test them out. So I decided to make, try making a plectrum for my husband to, for when he's playing his guitar, which is super, super thin. <laughs> and so I'm kind of breaking the rules just to see what happens, to see how strong it will be. And let's wait and see if I will be able to use, give, them, give him this... Um, Spectrum, and at the end of the video you're going to see him playing his guitar and seeing how well it works. So now we're going to go into super speedy mode and get through the, all the pouring because there was a lot of pouring so that we can get on to the very best bit which everybody always loves which is the demolding. Here I'm using my homemade pendant mould and this is the only thing that you won't actually see in the demoulding because um, I discovered that the wire that I've put through it, the strimmer wire, if you've seen my tutorial for this mould you'll understand what I'm talking about, the strimmer wire, um, I struggled to pull it out and it normally comes out okay but because I'd used it before and reused it it seemed to really, really stick. So if you have watched the other video where I made this mould and the jewellery with it, that's just a tip for you. Don't reuse the strimmer wire. Or if you do, put some release agent on it. So yeah, I, I didn't film myself um, demoulding that one. just making a bookmark with a pressed flower in it because I just wanted to test how this works with flowers to see if I've got lots and lots of micro bubbles around the flower which you often do uh, so that's why I was making this bookmark with the flower in. 
Right, I'm going to zoom through this. Uh, what you can see me doing is mixing the colours actually in the mould. It's not an ideal situation, but I didn't have enough cups or enough patience or enough time to do it all separately. And what I really do like about these pigment bottles is they've got a little stopper in the top with a hole in. So you can just sprinkle out your pigment without having to scoop it and that's really great. You can just use it like a pot of salt and it just is so quick and easy. And if you want to use more, you can just take the little stopper out and scoop it out as you normally would. So that's really good. But there is something I don't like and... It is my only gripe about these colours really and it's the fact that they don't have names. There's no name for each colour on the bottle and I suppose it doesn't really matter but for someone like me who does videos I can't tell you the name of the colour that I'm using. So yeah I would prefer it definitely if the colours had names. But that's one of the reason why, reasons why I'm doing this is so that I can put the colours under the pots in my storage and I don't really need the name on the bottle to guide me for what the shade's like. It's just there underneath and it's clear for me. So that's one of the reasons why I did this. And these, you know, these glitters, I'm just looking at them now. They're absolutely beautiful. It's my favourite thing out of everything Resin Pro sent me is these Galaxy Glitters. They are the most beautiful colours, absolutely beautiful. And I'm, I've am i used loads already before making the video. Um, so I'm definitely going to buy some more of those. And that reminds me, I do have a code for you for 15% off if you go to the Red resin brewer website and buy anything just put the coupon code in at checkout and you'll get 15% off and it's louise15 so at the end of that session i checked my stopwatch and i'd been working for an hour and 10 minutes and the resin was still quite runny so the working time for this resin is really good it gets a thumbs up for me Okay, so day two, I did find loads more moulds, so I just wanted to do a little bit more. Um, so, yeah, I just couldn't stop myself. Right, for these moulds, I decided to use the three jars of metallic pigments that Resin Pro sent me. And I'm kind of unsure about what I think to them, if I'm completely honest. They look beautiful in the jar. As soon as you take the lid off, you think, wow. <laughs> and then when you mix them in, I don't know, they kind of seem a little bit, they look grainy somehow. And I don't know, they kind of separate as well. I'm really not sure if I did something wrong um, or if they're just not well suited to mixing with resin i just don't know you see what you think when you see the results um and the color didn't turn out the way i thought it would turn out from looking at what they look like in the jar so the jury's out a little bit on these metallic pigments within resin i'm not sure about them however i have um been practicing with them with alcohol inks and they do work really well if you when you're doing your alcohol ink work to put sprinkle a little, little bit in it's the alcohol ink and it does make a really beautiful effect so it works well with them it also works well when you're working with uv resin um, to you might have seen it on my pyramid box video i used the gold pigment on top of the tacky UV resin, <clears throat> excuse me, and the effect of that gold pigment with the UV resin was really, really beautiful. So it is good in many ways. I'm just not sure if I'm happy with it in these items that I've been casting today. Right, it's the ultimate test now. I found this lacy um, mould which is for making ice, putting icing in for cakes and it is very, very, very fine and really 
Um, <laughs> I knew I was being a little bit brave trying this because it's expecting a lot for this to work. So we'll see what happens. I've rubbed it in really well to all those tiny little cracks. And what I wish I'd done is what hindsight is a wonderful thing, but what I wish I'd done is wiped off all the excess from the top a lot better than I did. Um, because afterwards, when I demolded this one, that film wouldn't come off. I couldn't get the film off. So next time I use that mold, I will wipe it a lot better. You can see here with this one what I mean about the gold, how it kind of acts a little bit strange. I don't know, I can't explain it. It just doesn't keep as one solid colour. It seems to kind of separate itself a little bit. I think it might work beautifully in um, pouring. You know, if you're making a picture, um, doing a resin pour, I think it would work beautifully in that, maybe in geodes, things like that. I'm just thinking maybe it's just not so good for casting. Right, so the bookmark was one of my tests for rigidity and it's um, bendy still the next day and that is completely normal. This resin takes up to five days to um, reach its full rigidity so I'm going to test it again after five days and you'll see that at the end. And I also wanted to test it with flowers to see how it works with flowers and it did work really well. I didn't see any air bubbles but I'll have another look. The plectrum actually funnily enough is more rigid than the bookmark which is thicker. It's good that it's still bendy the next day because I like to be able to mould things the next day um, like dishes and things like that you know I like to be able to form it into the shape of something else and which I have done with one of the pieces and you'll see that at the end too. And you can see all the colours have come out beautifully. Everything is going to, you're going to have a closer look at everything right at the end. So don't worry that I'm going so fast. I had to go fast, otherwise would have the video would have been too long. I'd never used these moulds before and I didn't really think they were my cup of tea to be quite honest with you. I got them because I thought they might be nice on a wedding cake or something but now I've put resin in them and looked at the detail on them they're actually really quite pretty and look how well the resin has picked up all the detail in these.
Okay, so let's see what I thought to everything. Here are my coloured domes in place on my storage, which I've made from a picture frame and some cardboard. And I can't wait to see those on the wall in my new craft room when I get it. But I'm quite anxious just looking at it now because I've missed a bottle out and that's kind of messing with my head a little bit. <laughs> anyway, let's look at these glitters. I'm absolutely in love with them. Look at the shades. I'm not a glitter person, never have been, but these, there's something just so classy about them. The colours are rich and beautiful and crisp. I just love them. And another good thing about these glitters is, as you can see, they haven't all sunk to the bottom of the mould. They're quite evenly dispersed. I thought they would just all fall to the bottom and they didn't. And the pigments, again, really rich colours and even dispersion love those greens very happy with them they just take a bit longer to mix but i think for those colors and the glitters i definitely give a 10 out of 10. now for the metallic set i did moan about them a little bit during the video i thought they looked a little bit grainy but i'm looking at them again and thinking it's more of a glittery effect than a grainy effect and the problem I had with my mo the things that I, I was casting could have been that the surface of my mould was a bit dull so I'm not quite sure about them there's the iridescent fine glitter I think that's beautiful so for those pigments I think I'm going to give them a 7 out of 10 because I'm still undecided and here's the colour in the jewellery that I've made, just to show you what it's, it came out like. And I think it looks really beautiful with the resin as well. It was the teal pigment. I call it teal. I don't know what its actual shade is because they don't have the names on. <laughs> and here's some um, in clear resin with just, just the glitter, no pigment. And it just shows you don't need pigment with the glitter the glitter does all the work by itself so you can have it with or without now let's look at the detail so have a look at that horse i love it i want to make a carousel i'm not sure how but i'm going to try <laughs> you know me i like to i get an idea and i try it and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't but i definitely want to try and the little cherubs and yet every little bit of detail has been picked up every little bit in those ones I used some of the copper and the rich gold mixed kind of, well not mixed together but alongside each other and they've blended and the leaf and this is the beauty of the low viscosity it's so thin it gets into all the little cracks and nooks and crannies in the moulds and you just see every little bit of detail very, very good for casting small items. I'm very pleased with it. And of course, with the low viscosity, it had a really long pot life. On the stopwatch, it said an hour and 10 minutes, and I could have gone on for a little bit longer, I think. So it really gets a 10 out of 10 for the working time as well. Right, now let's look at the clarity and the surface finish. Here's the bookmark with the flowers in and I was expecting to get some bubbles around the flowers but I think there was about one. It's really hard to capture it with the camera. I saw one near the one of the petals and that was it. So very, very clear. When I've, I found that when it's a large surface area like this one and you can get your heat gun to it, it's very, very clear almost zero almost zero micro bubbles uh, however with the crystals although it's beautiful and shiny and glossy and glass like really almost perfect when you look close up there are some micro bubbles look only a few but they're there they are definitely there and that's because there's a, there was less surface area to get into it with my heat gun. I think if I'd warmed up the resin beforehand, 
those might not have been there, but I didn't do that. I should have done really. And look at the glossy finish. It's really glass-like and the humidity, and this has been the hu most humid week of the year. It's been the perfect time to test it. The humidity hasn't affected the surface at all. So 10 out of 10 for clarity and humidity effects. I will give it 9 out of 10 for bubbles. Right then, it's time to look at strength and rigidity. Now, as I said earlier on, this resin isn't really designed to be used really, really thin for thin things like this. I was just pushing the limits. It's got a very, very slight bend still, but it's still it feels really strong. The same with the bookmark. Yeah, I had to push quite hard to make it bend, but there was still a bend. And like I said, I'm not going to mark give. I'm not going to consider that in the score that I give it because you know it does say plus one centimeter, one to three centimeters. It suggests so. That's not part of the strength test, really. Now, this one is one centimetre, the bangle, and it is really strong, really, really strong. And it needs to be because you're going to be squeezing your hand through there. So, yeah, it does get 10 out of 10 for the strength test. And the good thing is that because it was still bendy the next day, I was able to mould it into a different shape and I made one of the pieces that you saw me mould, I've made made it into this little vase by just, while it was bendy, I wrapped it round, it was actually the neck of a wine bottle, <laughs> I wrapped it around there and sellotaped it and left it there until it went hard and then sealed the bottom and it made a lovely little vase. So I just did that to show you that you can still manipulate it the day after after you've demolded it and then leave it a few days and once it's gone rigid you can take it away from whatever you're molding it on like the wine bottle which I used <laughs> Right, so we've got two categories left, price and smell. We'll start with the smell. I didn't find that there was much smell at all. If I put my nose really close to it, I could smell something. It was like just like a plasticky smell, but it wasn't a bad smell. It wasn't something I couldn't stand to be around. I had to go really up close to be able to smell it. That doesn't just because you can't smell it though, just, you do need to be careful with any resin because you can be fooled into thinking you're being it's completely safe because you can't smell it. You need good ventilation and you really should be wearing a mask. So don't be fooled by that. But yeah, I would give it 9 out of 10 for smell because it, it was there, but only just. Okay, on to price now. I'm very, very impressed with the price. I don't know how I've gone so long without knowing about this resin because the price is fantastic. I've been paying £27.60 for 500 grams of my usual resin. I won't mention the name because it doesn't feel fair to compare the specific one. But that's what I usually pay. And this one is £16.18 for 800 grams of resin. So it's even more resin for less price. And I'm so happy with the results of this resin that I think it's probably going to be the one I'm going to stick with. I'm really quite happy with it. And the thing is, um, it is... A European, it is in, it, based in Italy, this Resin Pro is based in Italy. But the the shipping is actually still really quick. When I got this, it took three or four days from the day that they posted it to me. Uh, on the website, it says three to six days shipping. It's free shipping after 
if you spend £60, I think it is, £60. Um, but the shipping price is actually quite reasonable anyway. So don't let the fact that it's not a UK-based um, company put you off, if you're in the UK. <laughs> Anywhere else in Europe, you sorted because it ships all over Europe. So there we have it. Resin Pro gets the thumbs up from me. If you would like to visit Resin Pro's website, please click the link above. I also have all their links in my description, including the voucher code. Don't forget to use the code. And if you enjoyed the video and you haven't already done so, please click like and subscribe so you can see what I come up with next time. Bye for now.